Messenger's Barbecue has been a staple on the South Carolina restaurant scene for decades, long before the current barbecue giants came to town. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with Michael Bessinger, the co-owner of Bessinger's Barbecue, for the special edition of Quintense Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintense Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Michael Bessinger, welcome to Quintense Close-Ups. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Obviously, you are the owner here of the iconic Bessinger's Barbecue yes. on Savannah Highway Auto Mile. Yes. I know that you've been doing this since August of 1990. Right, roughly, yes. When you think of the restaurant business in Charleston and barbecue, what is that to be you these days? Well, my brother is my business partner as well, and my father just recently retired, although he's still here. To be me or to be them is what's well, common people, you know? We work in the restaurant industry. You know, we are somewhat locally local celebrities. I don't, I don't, I don't like saying that. It's just kind of, I don't like that. But we get a lot of attention when we go out. We get a lot of respect, which I like because I appreciate our customers. Uh, but it's nice to know a lot of people in town. All the Charleston is growing so quickly. Not a lot of people know of messengers as much anymore, and that's okay. You and you talk about obviously respect. You all are voted the number one barbecue in the state of South Carolina. <laughs> we have been a few times. Um, there's a lot of great talent here. There's a lot of great barbecue restaurants here. We, we're glad they're here because they're, here they're, you know, their pressure or their ability to do what they do, you know, iron sharpens iron. Sure. So they also have great product, um, but we've been doing it for 80 years. It's hard to keep that momentum, you know, generation after generation after generation. Yeah. How do you keep it up generation after generation after generation? Start young and just work hard. My father worked us and worked us and worked us. It didn't matter how early it was, it didn't matter how young we were, he worked us. So we were that that was ingrained in us at such a young age. Quality and speed and care for what you're doing. You have a passion what you're doing. If you don't have a passion, my father never wanted you in the business. So how do you keep people in the business working for you these days? Um, we often don't. <laughs> the restaurant industry or the labor pool in Charleston itself is really depleted. Uh, we have had many employees who worked for us for 45 years. We had several, we were about 14 that worked for us for about, about roughly 20 to 45 years. We just treat our employees, a lot of them, like family, we care for them, we take care of them, they look out for us, we look out for them. Um, but that's not seems to be the case as much anymore. I think our, our longest term employee right now is about 35 years. Um, but we just try to invest in our employees. Yeah. But what about investment? Because obviously when you talk to the average owner around town, it's hard to keep up with the food costs and employees. What's yes. your secret? Uh, we don't have a secret, to be honest with you. We uh, we have battles every day. Food costs is forever rising, but it's not. But the food cost is more manageable than labor costs. The labor cost is extraordinary because uh, you have to hot pay people an absorbent amount of money who may not even be qualified. Just so you have someone who can put, help you put food out. Uh, that's our biggest challenge in quality and having people who care. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you care? Well, because it's my name on that sign up. <laughs> <laughs> and if there are times when I go out and oh, people let me know, they were very happy with us. But, I, but that, that encourages me to do better. So um, I care because my name is popular in Charleston. And like I said, people will let you know quickly if they are happy with you. But we care about the customer. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have to continue to do this. But we do it because we love it. Yeah. What is that favorite customer of yours? The ones I see in here three, four times a week. <laughs> this is it's just a little, you know, a small little family and small little community within this restaurant here. Although I don't see them out in public, I see them in here. Um, my favorite customer is the customer who comes and gives me their honest opinion and lets me know if I'm doing what I need to be doing. Yeah. What is your honest opinion about the change in Charleston? My honest opinion about the change of Charleston is good and negative. Um, I like 
people come and new people come and try our product. You know, barbecue in Charleston, it's not really South Carolina barbecue anymore. It's either us or Rodney Scott. It's true South Carolina barbecue. Um, so most barbecue is very common. A lot of common, a common theme. Our cut of meat that we use with our sauce is uncommon. Our onion rings are uncommon. Finding a good burger at a barbecue restaurant is uncommon. So introducing people like that to that type of food is exciting for us. The negative is the growth. The area can't sustain the growth. Uh, the labor pool is depleted, like I said. Now, a lot of people who are coming to Charleston don't appreciate South Carolina barbecue. Um, they think barbecue should be this way and that way only. And that's fine, because I like barbecue from all over. Now, I've had some bad barbecue, but generally I've had, I've had pretty much 95% good barbecue. But a lot of people coming here don't adapt that mentality. It's either very critical or very positive. But the, the negative I feel is that this the area just can't sustain the growth or the cost of living, and that's that worries me a little bit about the future of the city. How do we get here, Jamar? <clears throat> Popularity is a beautiful town. Great people. Uh, I, you know, I remember this area here. You can get from this restaurant to downtown. In about uh, two minutes, now you can. And along the way, we knew 40 people. Along the way now, we may know four. Um, not a lot of familiar faces in the area, and that's kind of a negative, too. Um, you know, it's not bad for the community. It's great for the for the income of the, the city. But, um, yeah. And you talk about good people. Obviously, you're a farmer. From what I understand, he... Still comes here every day and makes sauces? Every day. Wow. Every God. day. He and I, uh, my son's 13. He's been coming here to help me make barbecue sauce since he was about a nine. Um, but my father's, he's about to turn 88, but he still has, this is all, this has been his life. So he, makes, he wants to come in and make sure things are done the way he likes it done. Uh, even though uh, my brother and I are now the owners of the company, we sure. respect that, so treat him as if he is still the owner. Sure. So, you know. Uh, he is disrespectful observed. Well, yeah. sir, I know he instilled a lot into you. Mm -hmm. What else did he instill, instill in you when it comes to running a restaurant, being a businessman, being a person, being a father? What he instilled in me is that no one's going to do the job the way you would do it. You have to keep yourself invested in the business. You can't walk away from it. You can't let your employees run it, which is true. It's a hard, it's a hard balance trying to raise a family and, and and run a restaurant. You have to lean on people, the people you trust and depend on. But we have some people here we can really trust and depend on. Um, our manager Lori, she's been fantastic. She's been with us for thirty five years. I really trust her and depend on her. Um, but you always have to keep your eyes open. So uh, you always have to make sure that everyone's doing what you want to be done. Because if you take two, to, if you take too many steps back away things will slide. So you have to keep your eye on the ball. The father always told me that. And you have to constantly evolve. But do what you do and do it the best you can do. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. That's what he tells me. He says, do what we do good. I know, obviously, you talked earlier about the community. You say you really know a lot of all these four people now in this neighborhood. That's right. And right. from what I understand, you invested heavily in the Ardmore community. We, well, we used to try to get, um, and I'm not to see the Ardmore is doing more uh, Infrastructure, not infrastructure, but um, try to revitalize a little bit. Yeah. And um, we had some people approach us about trying to help financially or food. I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if that kind of fell to the wayside. But we've hired many, many people through Ardmore, trying to raise them up, train them properly. Um, a lot of good people in that neighborhood. Of course, there's some bad areas in the neighborhood, but there's a lot of good people in the neighborhood. Uh, investment, I, I would say we invested mostly in knowledge and uh, uh, trust in them to help do the job we need them to do. And I know you were in the business of really giving people second chances here. Yes. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> you know, I know some. I, I know some people in my life who made bad choices, but they're excellent people. They just made bad choices, and I think everyone uh, deserves a second chance. Now, it's sad to say that typically a leopard does not change its spots. You know, that's been my experience, but I won't sleep good at night unless I feel like I've given someone the benefit of the doubt to make it right. You know, I would hope someone would give me the opportunity if I messed up. So, um, people are good people. You know, people 
people, people are all good people deep down. So you just have to nurture that out of them and make them see that there's a right way and wrong way in life. Right. Yeah. You know, when I interviewed Anthony uh, Diabardo for Quintus Full Subs mm-hmm. earlier this year, he told me he, he got up at night, he really can't sleep because of yeah. those social media reviews. Yes. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Ambient. <laughs> it, it keeps you up. And Anthony's right. Anthony's a friend of mine. Um, it's really tough. If you take it personal because you put your heart and soul into this business. And um, we don't get to punch out and go home and go to bed. We're up all night, and I'm the same way. I don't sleep. I just don't sleep. Um, my wife says she's going to get another bedroom or kick me out to a single <laughs> bed because I'm keeping her up all night tossing and turning. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, 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 you, you have a passion for it. You work hard for it for your reputation and a good product. And you think you're doing a good job, but people are definitely there to let you know that you're not if, if they feel. It's sad that people will, will most likely write a bad review before they write a positive review. We have had several instances in the past couple of years where people will write to us or review stating that I've been coming here for decades. Always been happy. It's been fantastic. But I came there and I waited too long for my food or this wasn't the way I wanted it. And I'm never coming back. I find that to be a little unfair. You know, if they've been coming here for decades and they've never had a bad experience, that's a pretty good track record. Right. Why not ever write me that positive review? And I'll often ask them, I apologize, uh, since you've been coming for decades, have you ever written me a good review? Right. And nine times out of ten, like, no, we haven't. So that kind of hurts. It's personal. It hurts your feelings a little bit. Um, but at the same time, like I said earlier, it fuels my fire to keep, keep going, try to figure out a way to make it better. I have to lean on those employees who are coming and going so quickly through the door. It's a revolving door of employment. And it's hard to get people used to one way of doing things if they're coming and going so quickly. Yeah. How do you keep this going 10 years from now? That's, that's a question that my family has been talking about a lot lately. Um, our goal, or my goal, is to hit the 100 year mark. And I'll be 63 at that point. And uh, I'll decide then if we're going to continue with the business. However, we still have a lot of challenges ahead of us if we're going to make that 20-year mark. And we're just not certain how much, what it's going to take. Because your volume goes, with all these restaurants opening, our volume goes down. Um, when you're running at about 35% uh, labor uh, pool in this restaurant here, uh, I'm not even half, half, half the labor I need. So the staff we have, they're tired. We are getting tired and we're getting older. You know, my partner, Tommy, he's uh, getting older and he's been doing this since he was 13 uh, and his body's not holding up. My body's starting to break down a little bit. So I don't know. It's really interesting. It's really interesting to see if you make it 10 more years or if you want to make it 10 more years. Uh, 80 years of doing this, that's a lot. So um, time will tell if people will still want to come here. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they do. God willing. Yeah, right, right. But we have to reinvent the wheel a little bit, like the space we're sitting in now. What do we do with this space? We turn it into a full service restaurant with a bar, or we uh, tear it down and just reskin the whole restaurant, revamp it some other way to continue to stay popular or, or fresh. I think it's part of our issues that um, just not as fresh as we once were, since we have a lot of fresh restaurants in town. What is your favorite barbecue restaurant besides yours, of course? <laughs> what is? <laughs> Gosh, I'm going to make a lot of these guys mad. I know, I know, I know Anthony and Spicky Swine. I know Aaron at Home Team. I'm really good friends with John Lewis at Lewis Barbecue. And I just recently met Rodney Scott for the first time. And I have an appreciation for what Rodney does because I'm a South Carolina boy. He's a South Carolina yeah. boy. Um, they all have something different that I like a lot. I don't dislike any of them at all. Um, I, I don't really know if I have a favorite. <laughs> um, and, of course, Melvin's, you know, they're, they're related to us. We're not affiliated, but we're related. And their, their food is very similar, and they do a good job as well. Um, I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this. When you look at your menu here at Best Just Barbecue, mm-hmm. which particular menu item describes you? Uh, the pork sandwich. I just love the pork sandwich. So our cut of meat that we use paired with our barbecue sauce, in my opinion, is very unique. No one does it. And that's what makes us a little different than everyone else. Everyone else uses the same cut of beef, meat, which is Boston Butts. We don't. Um, and no one's mustard sauce is quite like ours as well. I just think those two 
combination is perfect. Uh, you put our barbecue sauce with the Boston Buck. In my opinion, it's, just, it's, not, it's not great, in my opinion. But our cut of meat with that and the onion ring, that's just my go-to. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, Michael Bessinger, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Wholesome. Thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate you, it. You're welcome. Hope yeah. to have you back. Absolutely. Yes, Anytime. Sir. Okay. Yeah.